I am Danielle McCall on outside. We're going to call it the Roy White Suite here at Yankee Stadium, number six suite. And we have a wonderful picture of Roy White then, and I'm with Roy White now. He's a two-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, 77, 78. He's, uh, the nickname is Mr. Consistent Yankee. Where did that come from first? I think Phil Rizzuto gave me that. Uh, and he used to call me the, the new old reliable, mm -hmm. that Tommy Henrik was known as old reliable. Uh, with the Yankees back in the 40s and 50s, and uh, Phil Rizzuto thought I was that type of player that you could always rely on me to come through with a count. And so, uh, so it's great to be uh, to, to get that from Phil Rizzuto. You know? Oh yeah, and it stuck. <laughs> so that that team was full of Mr. October, the Gator, Puff. What was the story behind all those nicknames? And I guess it kept it light in the clubhouse. Yeah, our clubhouse was uh, was pretty light. We had a lot of uh, unique characters on our team, uh, some unique personalities, mm -hmm. like Sparky, and Lou Pinella, Catfish Hunter, uh, Reggie, and some quiet guys like Chris Chambliss and myself. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we had a good mix, so there, there were no dull moments in the Yankee clubhouse. I forgot to mention Mickey Rivers, who was also uh, a very funny guy to be around. Still so, is. So we had a lot of fun playing baseball, but uh, when we got on the field, it was all business, and we knew how to win. Did you ever get put in like a, a spot where you kind of had to be, you know, the enforcer for some of the guys that were acting up? Not really. We didn't really have that too much of that. Uh, uh, I don't think I was a verbal guy. I just tried to be a good example, mm -hmm. you know, to work hard every day and go out there and hustle and, and try to do my job. So uh, I think Thurman was probably more of a vocal person when yeah. it came to that. And uh, we didn't have too many people loafing out there, though. I mean, we, we played hard all the time. Now, if you can give a, a nickname to a current or a, an iconic Yankee, who, what would it be? To a current? Yeah, current, current or, or an iconic, like a Pettit or a Passat or something. Uh, you know, I played with Mickey Mantle, you know, and uh, the Mick, as they used to call him, mm -hmm. and Whitey Ford and those guys. So that stands out in my mind more than anything because uh, I was just a kid watching them play in many World Series, you know, when I was 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. and couldn't conceive of myself being on the same team and those guys there when I first came up to the Yankees. Mm -hmm. In 1965. Now, how was that for you just to get there and be like, wow? Uh, it was amazing, really, uh, coming to the clubhouse and looking down and seeing Mickey Mantle sitting down in the corner, and then Whitey Ford and Elson Howard. Bobby Richardson was the second baseman, and I was the mm -hmm. second baseman when I came up, and I wanted to be as good as he was or mm -hmm. like him. It never could be that good, though. <laughs> so it was fantastic, really. Yeah, and the first thing Mickey Mantle ever said to you was? Uh, I'd have to go back. Uh, I first met him actually in a spring training. I think he came over and introduced himself, mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I'm Mickey Mantle." <laughs> like, like he didn't like know. He didn't know. Right? <laughs> but uh, I tell you, uh, the first thing that I really remember that was kind of funny was uh, my first game uh, that I got into as a rookie when I got called up in September 1965, and uh, we were playing a doubleheader against the Baltimore Orioles. And in the first game, I pinch hit and I got a hit, uh, my first time up in the majors. And then the second game, I started to second base, and I doubled the first time. And the second time I got up, I had another double, and, and I came around to score. And when I came into the dugout, Mantle looked at me and said, hey, kid, it's nothing to this game, is it? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny. Yeah, that's cool. All right, now we're, you're being back here with, with Joe Pagliano, Mint Pros. We're honoring the 77 team today. What's that like? Have any, has anybody come up with a story that you're like, oh, yeah, that was cool, you know, in the autograph lines or anything? Uh, not really. Uh, I haven't heard anything. Uh, uh, there's a few guys here that I haven't seen in a while that I don't get to see that often, you know, that are here, like uh, Greg Nettles. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not up as often as, as Mickey Rivers, who I see all the time. Yeah. I see Mike Torres quite a bit yeah. and, and Bucky Dent. So uh, when you get some of the other players that, uh, like Sparky Lyle, I haven't seen Sparky a lot, and Sparky's really? here, you know, and uh, so that's good to see him. Cool I, haven't reunion. Chance, I haven't had a chance to see him in a while. Yeah, it's like everything is like the same right, so as some, it was. We had some good laughs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I also want to ask that it was a very uncertain times in the Bronx. The Son of Sam murders, political upheaval, whatever. Did that ever make its way into the into the clubhouse, or you kind of kept that at the door? No, that never really was uh, in the clubhouse that much. Uh, it was like we hardly noticed, you know, yeah. that all the stuff was going on. Uh, 
Uh, a lot of people say, oh, there was a newspaper strike and all that, and that, that helped us, like the, that there was no the, that there was no press and right. stuff like that. And I don't think it really had anything to do with it. No. But to, then to, to win the World Series and bring it back to the city of New York, you know, what was that like? No, it was great. Uh, you know, we were playing the Dodgers, and I grew right. up in Los Angeles, so that made it extra special that we were playing the Dodgers, yeah. and, and we beat them in the World Series. And uh, all of us as uh, young guys uh, playing Little League always dreamed about you know, being in the World Series and winning, so that's the culmination of it. Had you grown up a Dodgers fan? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a Dodger fan. Uh, uh, I was a Cincinnati Reds fan yeah. because of the nice uniform that they wore. <laughs> yeah, you, you pick things like that when you're a kid. I know. I like the Jets because they were green. <laughs> now they stink, so. <laughs> All right, so we're well underway in the Bronx with the current Yankees, the Baby Bombers. What have you seen from these guys, and, and what do you expect for this season moving forward? Well, I think they're going to be in the thick of it right to the end. Uh, yeah. I think they have a good mix this year. The, the young guys have really, you know, uh, gave a, a shot in the armpit this club. Uh, you know, we had Sanchez last year that was a, uh, a big star at the end, you know, mm -hmm. did some phenomenal things. And then to have Aaron Judge come in this year and do what he's doing, and that was, you know, kind of totally unexpected. Right. Uh, nobody expected him to do as well as he did. Uh, I saw Aaron in, in AAA last year, and uh, I could see that he was a good athlete, you know, a good outfielder, and uh, tremendous potential. And yeah. uh, he's really put it together this year. Yeah. And I like the left-handed pitcher uh, Montgomery that's come up and helped him. So uh, the trades that they make, uh, that they made uh, to pick up uh, Todd Frazier and, and a reliever from uh, the White Sox, uh, I think it's Keuchel or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I think that's what's something that they needed. That was a shot in the arm for the team. So yeah. I'm looking forward to being in it to the end. Sky's the limit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, I'm Danielle McCartan <laughs> with Roy White from the Roy White Suite at Yankee Stadium.